Caddis Maximus here. This time I'm doing a review of the Duratac Home Utility or Weekend Warrior Grade 140 amp 3 in 1 welder. So, this is one of those inverter welders. I will mention that this box has obviously been gone into. There's only one layer of tape here. I've received a fair number of promotional products. This is a free promotional product. I appreciate them sending them to me. I take these because. One, I've already actually got another promo welder and it was kind of wanting to compare. And two, I don't take cash. I don't do sponsorship money. Only a couple times ever in my channel. I'd rather just receive a more decent product and if it isn't something I care about, then I end up selling it for cheap. Surprisingly enough, I sell them a fair amount of my promo products which are just really cheap. Just on you know, Facebook Marketplace or the friends and hook them up with a great deal and get a video out of it. We're going to do an unboxing triple air box here. It was actually shipped with another outer box so it didn't obviously look like it was a welder. And we'll see how this thing goes. We do include a basic spool of flux core MIG wire. So there's two kinds of MIG welding, wire drive welding. One is where you use a shielding gas, and this welder does support that. And, of course, it comes with the ubiquitous, ultra-cheap slag hammer. And then there's flux core, which is kind of like rosin core solder, where the chemicals that melt during welding to protect the weld metal itself from oxidizing, from reacting with oxygen in the air when it's molten hot. And flux welding is great. The biggest issue people have with it is it runs in reverse polarity compared to stick welding or shielded gas wire drive welding. Wow, actually I've never seen one of these come with some, what is that, some 6013, five little sticks of it. Hey, at least they gave you some rod. Never seen any of these come with rod before. Not heavy on the accessories, it does come with one of these. This is a particularly cheap welding clamp. My goodness, it just uses a copper band. It's not even a uh, meshed copper wire for the ground clamp <laughs> with not that thick of a cable, surprisingly enough. 10 millimeter cable, so that's right about 3 eighths. Same thing for the super cheap uh, wand on the stick. Surprisingly enough, the power cord itself is surprisingly chunky. It's almost nonsensical. So Duratec has made uh, made their name of being cheap but relatively affordable and a variety of hand tools. They start branding power tools now. Starting off with the most common shop items related to hand tools. I will give them credit for that. The first is a plasma welder which I reviewed a while ago. Excuse me, a plasma cutter. And now this is their welder. But they are designed to be pretty price competitive yeah, so this is what they're known for. They even now include little catalogs of all their various hand tools. So, Weekend Warrior, I, the other one was, I have reviewed another promo welder I said before, Pro Stormer. And this one, I don't know if it's 120 volt only. Took a second to figure it out. So these cheaper home welders are single voltage only so they aren't auto detected 220 they can only be used on 110 even that other one that I got is also a 120 only all the cheaper plasma cutters I guess because of the amount of energy they use are dual voltage and better ones I would say three to five hundred dollar range are also dual voltage on the welders hilariously they advertise it includes an adapter which it does to go from supposedly 20 amp to 15 amp. The problem is that is a proper adapter because it has the sideway at one vertical, one sideways that indicates 20 amp only, but they just put a 15 amp cord end on instead of a cord end that actually has the one prong turned sideways. So this adapter is totally pointless. Like Also, this didn't even come with like a buddy welding mask. Kind of basic. We'll take a look at the sufficiently long eight foot uh, MIG wand. Comes with a standard gas tip rather than a flex core tip. Fortunately, these are pretty universal. These and the 
replaceable tips here. I didn't see any other tips. I wonder what size it came with. There you go. It came with tips. For people who don't know, these are just the standards. What I mean by standards, you can go to Harbor Freight, get tips and shields for these kind of welders. So it's really convenient to do that as well as wire. They did include some extra tips, not just the 30 thousandths, because 35 thousandths is like the de facto standard size for flex core MIG welding. And a 23 and a 35. At least that's an advantage is you can get super small 0.023 wire and it doesn't run very much current. Weld slow, you don't do giant welds with it, but it would easily work on just about any circuit. It does come with 0.035 wire, so probably should have installed the proper tip. Something to note, this does come with both kinds of rollers, smooth groove and corrugated groove. The corrugated groove is used for the flux core MIG wire because it's a hollow wire. It's a tube that's filled technically. So this just gives the wheel a little bit more grip. But when you're using standard solid wire in a gas shield, you use these smooth wheels. That's what they're for. By the way, this is a flux core uh, shroud. This is for gas. And I don't know why when these welders come with flux core wire, the big deal about having one of these when you're using flux cores, this has a big old gap. So it just allows more particles to build up in there unnecessarily and blocks your view some because obviously this one here is much smaller in diameter that actually sticks out a little bit so you can really get into tight spaces and have great visibility i don't know why once again they don't include that now with the unboxing it takes a while to get to it let's take a look here this is probably honestly the bigger uh, so what we have here is we have on MIG welding, interesting, at a 60, 50 amps at a 60% duty cycle. I mean, that's microscope. That's only using the super thin at the 35 thousandths. We're looking at 90 amps for only a 20% duty cycle, which is, it's not great. I mean, that's not great. That is definitely light duty. And if we look at the stick welding here, 80 amps at 20%, which is like barely enough for eighth inch rod, and only 45 amps at 60%. That is the elephant in the room, is the fact that it uh, has really low rated duty cycles, especially for the welder. They're still trying to get like $200 out of it. Uh, really surprised about that. It does have a quick feed for the wire drive. You select the three modes here. You never really use this as a TIG welder. You just use it for a stick and wire drive. They don't have an internal terminal. They just use a loopback wire. So when you're doing flux core, this is the polarity of what your wand is. If you're using flux core, at least they labeled it. Um, it goes into the negative and your ground clamp actually becomes the positive. Being a manual welder, you manually set the wire speed, which is the same on all. That's just how fast and how much deposition rate, which you always manually control. Let's have a really computerized one where you can set the material thickness. And this is the voltage, how hot it's going to be. That Pro Stormer is a little different because it's, uh, at least it has a CPU where it kind of automatically controls the voltage and then you just adjust whether you want it hotter or cooler. Or on one like this, uh, it's traditional. It's all manual. It just has an inverter-based power supply. I'll give them some credit for having a basic welding chart here with material thickness. Give you an idea of what to initially set it up for for different processes like stick or flux core. One thing I will criticize them about isn't the plastic drive system. All of them have that. At least it does have a ball bearing. But... Here is this thing right here is where the wire goes into. That's the initial feed tube. And this has a stepped version. That's how it can take 10 pound spools have a two inch diameter hole and the two pound spools have a three quarter inch diameter hole. It's really easy to make adapters just out of a piece of wood or anything. At least it supports it. The problem is 
is a 10 uh, 10 pound wheel is like this big and the wire comes up at a sharp pretty sharp angle these are really designed to be friendly and a pretty straight feeding with the smaller rolls my criticism is that guy is stiff it's not flexible and that's an issue because the wire is just going to end up oh it's just a plastic tube uh, tapered so it locks into place but I don't really like that that plastic tube does not bold well they don't include any extras and that will cut as that steel wires going up through the corner of that this thing I mean that's gonna wear out real quickly what you what they should have done is use that yeah, what do I it's like the wire wrapping that's around uh, Bicycle brake cables or derailleur cables. This Pro Stormer was a, is a lot cheaper, and surprisingly enough, they did that right where it is a steel wound uh, insert, so they can flex down, flex around when you're using a big wheel. Plus, this is more elegant because it has the polarity inside the box, so that you don't have some ugly uh, second wire in the front. And really, the elephant in the room is this we just looked at the amperage on this and this pro stormer here what is it on a uh, stick 125 amps at a 60 percent duty cycle and mig welding it will do its full output at 60 percent or 108 amps at 100 percent continuous and 97 amps at 100 percent on stick welding so this will supposedly run eighth inch stick continuously stick after stick and that surprises me about the Duratec. Plus, it even came like a better strain relief up here. Is that this Duratec is has just these incredibly low ratings. It's MIG 50 amps at a 60% duty cycle versus the Pro Stormer is technically rated for twice as much current at the same duty cycle plus that pro stormer is microprocessor controlled it dynamically adjusts the voltage it detects on the, the real-time current and it self adjusts and then you just have a wheel that is an absolute voltage it's just plus or minus um, a given voltage for a wire speed that whole dynamic voltage thing that microprocessor is one of the things that really makes a big deal of those you know, really nice digital display welders is they have that feedback system so they really well consistently because they're constantly monitoring and adjusting hit a little area of more resistance it will bump up the voltage a tiny amount and when the resistance drops and the currents uh, going too high it'll dynamically drop the voltage to maintain a nice average output power so we'll see how well this thing is to a adjust and set up here. So there it is. Overall, it seemed to work okay. I just think it's a little expensive for what you're getting. Real competitive in these uh, Chinese IGBT or transistor-based welders. A couple of my stiction issues. One was the fact I actually ended up touching the tip into the puddle, which can happen. You got to be careful that when you're using these types of cones, just because that tip is so exposed. 
really easy to get a little bit too close. It also seemed to have kind of starting out, part of it is its limited duty cycle. On the manual it says it's maximum 23 amps input current. So it has a limited amount of surge current ability and that can also contribute to wire sticking. So here's the tool I invented. It is a true ratchet wrench now. I didn't get that aligned real great. But getting the, you know, running about 15 and a half volts or so with whatever it is, 3 or 30% of the wire speed, seemed to be pretty good. Let me flip this around. So this was the first weld. I actually got that filled in. Seemed to have pretty decent penetration. I could have had maybe you know, slowed down going across and just filled that out just a little bit more. And then on the second weld here, on this side, that's where I had some of my sticking issues, but my helmet was also a little bit too dark, so I couldn't quite see what I was doing. So, a little funky starting out, maybe a little bit more splatter because of that. And then finishing it out, I went just a little bit slower and a touch less wire speed just so I wouldn't get that too hot. And, and with a decent weld, to tell you the truth. So, if all these years of people watching my channel, I am not a professional welder, but I can make welds that will at least not immediately fail. Plus, I'm ridiculously rusty. Other than that, not a lot else to say about this Duratec welder besides, you know, I think it'll do the job. I still like that Pro Stormer one just because, even though, it, not just because it's cheaper, but it actually seems to be a little bit better built. Not to mention it has a massive, like, 40 amp surge capability out of 100. I mean, it needs a 50 amp socket to really run on 110 volts. Which is why it has so much higher of a duty cycle. And to tell you the truth, I think that's where this Duratec falls short, is exactly that. A low, you know, it's designed to really only work on 20 amp, 120 volt outlets. Really limiting how long you can continuously weld with it. And once again, certain issues where, and I think particularly with stick welding, I didn't want to try that because I know my circuit breaker probably wouldn't handle it. Stick welding with 8th inch stick needs around 65 amps of output, at least on the old Lincoln tombstones. That's where I'd set them to to weld with stick. Some people go all the way up to like 80 amps. Just for 8th inch stick is going to be at the, the limits, at least of this machine. And the other issue I have is it doesn't come with like a buddy mask. Uh, I could criticize the Pro Stormers welding or grounding clamp, but this is so far the cheapest I've ever seen. And basically think dirt and the fact that it's entirely manual has some settings for changing from stick. And it does have arc force, which is uh, a setting for attempting to prevent the arc, the arc welding rod from sticking but it could be a little bit more improved in the electronics department especially if the pro stormer can include a processor that uh, deals a lot of stuff automatically or dynamically while allowing you more ma uh, manual adjustments and so they think they kind of missed an opportunity there I appreciate them sending it to me and if you can get one used for real cheap you know open box for 150 bucks I think it would be worth it it would it ends up laying down the weld but as far as the world of cheap welders cheap transistor based welders are concerned that will work on 120 volts uh, the cards are kind of stacked against this one or I shouldn't say stacked it's the fact that this welder just isn't the most competitive player in the market when you're getting to 250 dollars, that really opens you up. Uh, a company called Best Arc really makes a lot of pretty competitive welders in those rate price ranges. Anyway, thanks for watching.